learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I know a lot of people were worried about Carolyn. She got sick and then it got worse and she had some dehydration. She's taking it easy. She's gotten a lot, lot better. As a matter of fact, today she was out walking around. I mean, she's doing a lot better. She's not dizzy and, and having all kinds of issues. Thankful that we were able to get her on the road to recovery. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today about off-grid living and don't get frustrated with living your dream. I've said in the past, a long time ago when I was a nomad, that solar panels to me were just more work than they were worth. I had them, I don't know, uh, 15, 20 years ago. I had them on my house. I only had, I think, 400 watts, 300 watts. They were constantly a pain in your side. Of course, I had a full-time job and I had family and so, it seemed like any time they had a problem, it just interfered. Now, the solar panels I had in my house did not power our house. It powered some of our lights. When we had power outages, it was good to run the refrigerator with, but not for very long because they couldn't keep up. But one of the things I noted back then was solar panels are horrible in hot weather. What? Why would they be horrible in hot weather? Yeah, I mean, look at this. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Solar panels aren't going to work very well. We have 800 watts of solar panels. Now, the reason we have 800 watts of solar panels is I, I kind of did the math, and on cloudy days is when you want to do your calculation. So on a cloudy day, I don't get 800 watts. I get a, maybe 200 watts is kind of the thinking. However, when it is a sunny day, you're making all this energy, I mean tons of energy, and you want to try to utilize it as much as possible. As a matter of fact, that's when I run my power tools. I can run my drill and my grinder and my reciprocating saw. What I'm gonna do is when I'm building my tiny house, instead of running my generator, the only time I run my generator is with my circular saw because it, I don't have a big enough inverter for that. And the rest of the tools I'll use off my solar panel on sunny days. Now, also, we run the air conditioner. Now, I don't have enough solar panels to run the air conditioner full time, 24 hours, seven days a week. I don't have enough batteries. So what I do is about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, I turn on the air conditioner, I run it on solar panels until about three o'clock roughly. And at that time, I take the air, air conditioner off the solar panels and I put it on the generator and I run it until six, seven o'clock at night. And then I just shut the air conditioner off. So that gives plenty of time for the solar panels to charge the batteries back up because I've used quite a bit of energy on the air conditioner. And so that way I have plenty of battery left for the night. But one of the big downsides to solar panels is they hate hot weather. They're actually pretty bad at hot weather. You can Google this. Just type in solar panels voltage drop in hot weather or something like that. And you'll get all kinds of information. And it's actually pretty scientific information. They can tell you what the temperature is outside based on how many volts your panels are producing panels are made produced in a controlled environment i think it's like 77 degrees 78 degrees so every 10 degrees above 77 degrees so 87 degrees you lose 10 percent of your solar panels so one solar panel i have is 100 watts that means i'm only going to make 90 watts at 87 degrees 80 watts at 97 degrees well the thing they don't tell you in this equation is the solar panels are dark color so here it is early morning it's not even 80 degrees outside it's probably well it's probably yeah 80 degrees so but it's hotter than my hand my body temperature is 98.6 degrees so i would say these are probably 120 130 degrees something like that they're pretty hot so i'm already losing energy first thing in the morning because dark colors absorb sunlight absorbs heat Light colors don't. Well, I still want to run my solar panels from say 10 to three o'clock, so what do I do? What I, I turn on my generator for about five minutes every hour or so, and I run my well pump, which has, you know, what, 58, 60 degree water coming out of it, and I just cool off my solar panels, no problem. It takes five minutes. And I go back inside, Solar panels are just producing tons of energy at this point. It's incredible to watch. You know, producing 23 amps and all of a sudden you, you come out here, you pour some water on it, you jump back into the camper, you look at the 
amps and you're up to 40 amps. I mean, that's how big of a difference it is. It's incredible. The problem with well water, anybody want to guess what problem with well water is? Well water has tons of calcium and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but it creates a film on the panel of calcium. <laughs> But now I'm shading my panels. So I was able to cool them off, but now I have another problem. I'm shading them. So I lose voltage over that. The shading of the, of the, from the calcium takes a longer period of time for that to accumulate. But it does happen pretty quick. I, what, maybe a week? And I had a pretty serious thick layer of calcium on my solar panels. I, you, know, you get to this point where you're just frustrated. It's like, dang it, nothing ever works. So I'm out here with water and a towel I'm trying to clean it. Of course, I'm using calcium water because that's all we got is well water. Again, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but it cleaned it a little bit, but it streaked it. See how that's all streaked? Now, I take my hand now and rub it off. So it made it better. Rubbing at it with a rag made it easier to, to clean. Look at that, see? So I have to figure out a way now to deal with the calcium. Well, of course, we're going to buy some lime away or something like that, something that cuts uh, calcium. You're probably thinking, well, what do I care? I'm not going to live off grid. I came over here because I want to learn how to live my dream. Well, this is kind of the point of the video. I am trying to teach you how to live your dream. My dream is to live off grid. And part of that is I have to problem solve issues that come up. It's easy for me to just say, well, you know, we'll hook back up to the grid and I'll never have to worry about a thing. I'll, I'll pay someone else to deal with it. And I think that's the society that we've come up to now is we'll just pay someone else to deal with it. Someone else is smarter than me to deal with it. But I want to be the guy who solves the problem. My own problem, my own solution. The other thing is, is, you know, I was telling you I had solar panels, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was, and it would get frustrating having to deal with solar panels. Well, I don't have those kind of responsibilities anymore. My whole responsibility in the life is to live off grid. That's my job. I'm working very hard at my job. So what difference does it make if I have to come out here all the time, cool the solar panels with calcium water, and then figure out a way to clean the calcium? I mean, what else is there? That is off grid. That, that is the solution to the problem. Instead of me paying someone to come in and fix the power lines, yes, I have power lines, I'm not hooked up to the power lines, not at all. See, no power lines come to my house. In order to live your dream, you have to determine what it is you want out of life. And I think this is where a lot of people fail and are unable to live their dream. And I really have a hard time explaining this. If your dream, let's just use me example. If my dream is to live off grid, then I have to try to dedicate myself to living off grid because it's basically a full-time job. There's a lot to do, firewood, you gotta cut firewood, you gotta, you always gotta make sure your water is, is filled up and you, you got your generator running, you got your solar panels performing effectively. There's always something to do. Splitting wood. Splitting wood is a full-time job. I've always got wood to split. If I have nothing else to do, I better be up there splitting wood. The problem comes in at is the other things. Okay, well, if living off grid is a full-time job, how am I going to make money? Now, I do have a job. I want to, Before I get into this, I don't want anybody to think I don't have a job. I do have a job and I do have to work the job. I don't make as much money. That means I have to focus on living off grid. So it all balances out. I don't have to pay for heat because I'm cutting firewood. So I can reduce the amount of money I need to make for heat because I'm working it here. But the, the problem is, is so many folks say, okay, I got to have a job because I got, for example, get heat. Well then, you're not really focused on the dream. And here's an example. We wanted to control some of the weeds around the camper. We, you know, trying to keep copperheads down. Carolyn and I was discussing how we're gonna control the weeds. Well, of course we can go out and get some weed killer. That takes money. And of something that has one use, killing weeds. And I don't know how much weed killer costs, but let's just say it costs $10. Well, is there anything that we can do to control the weeds ourselves that doesn't cost as much and that we can make? You know, living off grid, we don't want to have to go buy it. So Carolyn found a nice recipe 
for weed killer. And she tried it out and sure enough, it's killing the weeds. It's incredible and it's all natural. So we're not even harming the environment and, and it's not cancer causing. But I can assure you that if you're going out and buying that weed killer, you're taking one step further away from actually ever doing your dream because you're not focused on the dream. You're focused on going out and buying things. So today I wanna to try to challenge you a little bit. The next time you're at a store, you go in with a grocery list of things that you need. And there is a huge difference between need and want. I need nutritional food, but do you need the ice cream, soda, and beer? And no, you don't. So you're that one step closer to accomplishing your dream. Thanks for watching.